self-love and the seven deadly sins. We need self-love or self-esteem, which is the consideration or appreciation we have for ourselves. This serves us to lead a life in which we have a good opinion of ourselves and thus feel like respectable members of society, where our progress is supposed to be for the good of ourselves and others. Just as in a big colony, each individual does important work, so must the human being live according to the rules required by his or her environment for the common good of all. We all want to be well, have good things, good jobs, good health, and long life. But because of this self-love that seems so necessary and good, we begin to fall out of the love that we owe to God and to our neighbor, since we put our own interests above those of others. Therefore, self-love becomes something necessary and becomes our enemy in the spiritual realm. The knowledge of ourselves consists in knowing that God is everything, since He is who He is and we are nothing, then whatever we are is because God has willed it. Nothing good comes out of us, except God moving us to do something through His grace. And this is truly the case when we live in conformity to His divine will. For God has created us to know Him, to love Him, and serve Him. There is no other reason for our existence. This being so, we must know Him through our search in continuous prayer, meditation, contemplation, and the sacraments. We must love Him by loving our neighbor as His word demands. This love begins with understanding all those who are close to us, accepting them as they are living in harmony with them and helping them through works of mercy. We serve God when we serve our neighbor. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Self-love is not only practiced in individuals, but also in groups, from which divisions and fanatism arise as in politics, religion, sports, racism, and others. Many times it leads to pride that causes war, destruction, and death. Self-love becomes the author of all our deadly sins. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Because human beings do not deny themselves, as the Word of God asks us to do, but rather they attack one another with pride in search of satisfaction. Let's look at some things in the way they are caused by self-love. Pride. When self-esteem is hurt, pride comes to the defense as a watchdog justifies any action. It is the imitation of Satan who proudly felt greater than God and was therefore expelled from heaven. Along with pride is selfishness that seeks only personal good and does not care about crushing others. There is also the vainglory which aspires to greatness and sees all others as inferior beings. Even from the cradle, we begin to feel power. And in our pride, we begin to call attention to ourselves and to be corresponded. This power grows in us and becomes a desire to be superior to others. Ways to overcome pride can be found through humility, self-denial, and conformity or acceptance of God's will. Let us look at more things that cause self-love, lying, deceit, falsehood, vanity, and the world. 
In order to satisfy self-love, it becomes necessary to hide reality, to have a mask so as not to show the truth. Lies are a weapon to deceive others and thus defend the armor of our falsehood. Lies engender the vanity that makes us adore ourselves. We artificially embellish ourselves to be what we are not. We want to live in castles like kings and queens who are moving further and further away from God. God is the truth, but the lie within seeks to contradict God in us. The only way we can overcome the lie is by always living in God, who is the truth. The world attracts and hypnotizes us with these delights, occupations, and distractions, thus allowing us to steal from God the time that we should give Him in worship. We live so busy that there is no time for God. We can only overcome the world and its attractions through the recollection that being in God's presence offers us. And we also have to fight against other sins such as hatred, impatience, intolerance, anger, and judgments, which are born of self-love. Hate begins with impatience, intolerance, and then anger, which is transformed into hate. We are uncomfortable with everything that touches our self-esteem. It makes us rude, spiteful, defiant, and we always want to be right. Pride serves as fuel for all man's passions. His main slave is self-love, which in turn enslaves us. The Lord tells us in Luke chapter 6, verse 37, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. But it seems that we all become judges of others and always have the reasons to condemn. We can only overcome hatred and all these partners by living in God with love. Other sins that self-love leads us to are lust, sensuality, fornication, adultery, and hedonism. As human beings, we have sensuality as an integral part of our body. But the love of sensuality becomes a weakness that leads us to lust, fornication, adultery, and hedonism. These are passions that are difficult to control since they give us maximum carnal satisfaction. The Word of God calls us to overcome the world the devil and the flesh, which are the three main enemies of the soul. When the satisfaction of self-love goes beyond the commandments of the law of God, we enter into all the deadly sins. We overcome lust with prayer, fasting, abstinence, and the knowledge that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. To overcome Hedonism, that pursuit of pleasure as the most important thing in our lives, we must practice physical and spiritual fasting. This is because self-love is like a friendly demon that acts within us and also leads us to greed, covetousness, envy, materialism, and jealousy. The desire to have what others have, or to have more, moves man to commit injustices and even crimes. For the greedy, nothing is enough. The hunger for fortune grows and grows even, though he knows he cannot take everything to the grave. Self-love enslaves man to have more than he has, and thus he can never be happy. For it is very true that he who needs little is richer than he who has much and yet wants more. Jealousy moves people to feel ownership of their loved ones, whether they are spouses, children, or employees. They also feel jealousy of what others have 
and that they may have what they have. They cannot sleep well because they are afraid and must take care of all their loves. This capital sin can only be overcome by detachment, almsgiving, charity, and detachment from earthly goods. And self-love also affects us by allowing us to be physically and spiritually lazy. Sloth is like an apathy toward divine things that leads the soul to neglect spiritual things. Self-love leads us to use time exclusively for ourselves, or I, the center of the world. Everything revolves around me. If we do not have time for prayer, we do not have time for God. It is said that laziness is the mother of all vices. And in the spiritual life, this is so true that if we do not have time for God, God is not worth anything to us. What then can we expect from Him? We have to take action, make time for the author of time, so that we can overcome laziness and sloth. Gluttony is also a sin born of our self-love. All the vices of the flesh and concupiscence come from that disinterest in self-control. The individual gives free reign to pleasure, forgetting about its consequences, both physical and spiritual. This is the source of alcoholism, gluttony, drug addiction, and many other evils. We can only defeat the donkey of the body when we tame it with correction, prayer, fasting, and contempt. Conclusion God desires the best for us. And this is achieved through his love, not through self-love. For he who loves himself and does not hate sin, hates God. We must mortify the body and self-will. This is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. If anyone wants to be my disciple, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Self-love is a cloud that hides the love of God, which blinds us so that we cannot see the divine light. For when self-love hides the light of God, we cannot know ourselves. And so we give free reign to our rebellion. The abhorrence of sin and sensuality leads us to overcome self-love completely. Selflessness, tolerance, and humility allow us to do everything for the love of God. We see then that it is God's will that we do His will, for out of it we come out of His light and enter into our world of darkness and rebellion, sin. Self-love is that cloud which covers the light of God's love, blinds us and prevents us from truly knowing ourselves. Self-love is the self-will that ignores God's will, works stubbornly in the darkness and leads us into sin. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, share this message, and leave your comments. Do you think your relationship with God is affected by your self-love? Please let us know. God bless you.